Hey everybody, this is Freddie with LeviathanScuba.com. Today we get to talk about one of my favorite accessories. It's not a necessity, it's a luxury, but oh what a luxury it is. We'll get to that in just a minute. We have had one heck of a week here at Demon. So in today's discovery video, we're going to talk about rash guards. One of my favorite accessories ever because of what it actually does for you. So I call them a luxury, not a necessity because they're not really needed for scuba diving. They're just one of those accessories that's going to add to your experience in a big way. Matter of fact, if you haven't been exposed to these yet, and this is your first opportunity to learn about them, you're going to want to hug me when this is over. <laughs> Okay, so what the heck is a rash guard, right? I'm going to use the most common use of the word because I suppose you could use that term for a lot of different things. And depending on what part of the world you're in when you're watching this, they do call them different things. For example, over in the UK, they call them rashies, right? In Australia, they're stinger suits. Uh, here in the United States, typically rash guard, but they've been referred to as a UV suit, a sun suit, a uh, uh, rash vest, those kind of things, which they're not really a vest. I don't know why they call them that, but I've seen some reviewers talk about them and call them rash vests. <laughs> okay, so what the heck is in your dive shop where you're at? It's going to be, I'm going to call it a rash guard. What it basically is, is it's a shirt. Right? It's a shirt. But what it's made out of and what it does for you is very, very specific. It's not just a regular t-shirt. It's very different. And part of that is the material that it's made out of. And uh, you can get it long sleeve. You can get it short sleeve. Uh, you can see here you can get them a little bit more loose fitting or you can get them very snug fitting depending on the sport that you're going to use it for because it's not just for scuba diving very typically snorkeling and a lot of surface sports that involve water. Uh, but the material that I mentioned is stretchy. It's spandex. It's not going to, you know, inhibit your motion or your flexibility and what you're going to do. It's not going to limit you. Okay. But depending on where you're going to use this would be the type that you buy. I'm going to say that because scuba diving, surfing, any ocean sport where there's salt water, you want to try to find ones that are made just for salt water specifically. I'll tell you why. You'll see bicyclers wearing material like this, like a lycra or a, or a spandex material or a nylon. And they want the same benefits that we do in the comfort and, and the stretchability and not limiting the motion. But typically, if you look what they're made out of, they have very fine, fine fibers of rubber. And salt water, you know what that does to rubber. Just eats it up and you don't want to do that. You're still going to have to um, rinse these in fresh water when you're done scuba diving and things, but if you get them where their material on the inside is, uh, is more like a silicone or some of the other materials that you can use in salt water, then it's going to last you a lot longer because the fibers are so tiny, the salt water just eats it up like that. So buy these not at a bicycle shop, not at your local you know, discount store or something, Buy them from a scuba shop or a surf shop, something like that, that's made for the salt water. Okay? Now, I don't want these confused with neoprene for you. Two different things, okay? There are neoprene suits that are made very uh, thin, one mil thick maybe, and they have their own benefits and they're used a, in a little different fashion than these. So don't confuse this with like a neoprene vest or shirt or something like that, a hooded vest, because those are more in the category of wetsuits, okay? Okay, so if you're going to use this for um, snorkeling and scuba diving, then you can also find them in pant form. You can find rash guard material for pants, and they have the same benefits as the rash guard 
you know, that you wear on the top. So sometimes the gals like to wear these, and there's some of the benefits that you'll see on putting on a wetsuit, that really helps in a big way too. And you can find a lot of different styles, depending on what you're out there. Um, you can buy a full length rash guard. Now, the terminology for these often is called a skin. This is a rash guard material skin, different than a neoprene skin, okay? They can cross over. You can use some for the similar things, but this is meant to be worn underneath a wetsuit. It could be worn all by itself, but typically they'll wear this under a wetsuit, full length. Men, women, they all use them, and it has the same benefits we'll get into for the rash guards, okay? Now, who uses these things? I kind of mentioned it a little bit. Obviously, we're scuba divers, but anybody that's playing in the water, surfers, snorkelers, kayakers, but even beachgoers, just playing in the surf, it'll protect you, uh, and you'll get the benefits from it, right? Anyone participating in water sports are going to receive the benefits of wearing a rash guard. Now, you can get them crazy and wild, or you can get a mild, different designs that you want to reflect your personality. Okay, so now, why? Why do you want one? It's just another piece of gear to carry with you, right? Well, first of all, these things weigh nothing. You wanna pack it in your luggage? You could pack 10 of these. <laughs> and it's probably the same weight as two cotton t-shirts and, and they just fold up into nothing because they're just so, so thin. But they're very, very strong. I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, why wouldn't you use just a cotton t-shirt to do the same thing? If you've ever tried to use cotton socks in, instead of booties, in your fins, you're gonna know why quickly the benefit of this over cotton. Because number one, that'll give you blisters, terrible. Now wearing a cotton shirt under your wetsuit, it can be a little abrasive. Just try it when you're a little sunburn, you'll know what I mean. Get some sand in those cotton fibers and it becomes so much worse. But also one of the benefits we'll get into is how they help you get a wetsuit on. But cotton is grippy when it's wet and then it doesn't dry quickly, you're wearing it on the boat, it's sticking to you. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, you can do it, but it's not the best option. Um, so these suit, these uh, rash guards, I don't know, I mean, look how thin that is, but yet it's super tough, very durable, very strong, and, uh, and it has some stretchiness to it, so it's gonna, it's gonna add to the experience. When you don't want something thick, like neoprene, right? You're, you come out of your dive, you, you're wearing a wetsuit, it's 95 degrees outside in the tropics, if you peel that off, then you're gonna feel better, but everywhere you have to wear it, you're not gonna to want to wear the suit in the sun. It's just gonna cook you. It's gonna be a hot sunny day, it's just gonna be way too hot. So another reason why is, if you go back to basically why these were first invented, if you go to Australia, they have a tiny little jellyfish called the box jellyfish that's the most toxic thing in the ocean. It's got the most uh, powerful poison, and it kills people every single year. And for some of the people that are just playing in the beach, little kids playing in the waves, they had to come up with something to stop these box jellyfish from stinging them. You wouldn't want to wear a full wetsuit just playing in the surf. And then scuba divers, you're down there with those box jellyfish, as well as anything else that possibly can sting you or, you know, like fire corals and things. So they invented a shirt that was light enough, dried fast enough. It wasn't... Uh, thick like neoprene, so you, it was like a little kid just wearing a shirt on the beach. But it protect from all the little stingers, okay? And abrasions, you know, a surfer takes a tumble in the ocean and he hits the bottom ways, and this is nice to have against your skin because it just, it, it resists the abrasion. Also, sun, uh, it helps you be more comfortable in the hot sun something to wear under your wetsuit, and when you're hanging out on the beach or the boat. Anytime you're gonna transition from water to dry land, you'll appreciate the benefits of a rash guard, okay? So, they can also have, uh, add style to your diving, all right? I got this one in Cozumel, kind of fun. Pronounces that I'm out there diving, wanna dive, and so it's a lot of fun. Okay, there's some neat designs there. And yeah, dive brands, they have their own. 
a lot of dive manufacturers make. This is Fourth Elements Rash Guard. And I don't know if it comes across on film really how light and, and airy these are. Uh, here's one that typically a lot of fishermen use. They're on the bank of a river and they, uh, you know, they want to resist the sun. And if they splash, they get in the water, get the fish, whatever, get out, dries real quick. Okay. And then, you know, every personality, there's solid colors. You can have solids. You can have patterns, you know, the ladies like some of those. <clears throat> Here we have just a vacation one. That, that would look fine just sitting on the beach or at the bar at the restaurant, right? This one's kind of fun. This is one of our 5280 designs. You saw the octopus a little earlier on the turtle. Well, this is the female version of it. And it has an octopus. It goes all the way around to the, you know, on the side and the back a little bit. Kind of fun. So you can wear matching. And then one of our most popular designs. This is the female version, but we also have a male version in this one. And here's one I actually wear. So <laughs> kind of reflect some fun. We got our Spider-Man design. If you're the more Venom kind of guy, there you go. Maybe you're not a Spider-Man fan. Maybe you're a Batman fan, right? So you go out there. They're just, it's just for fun, right? Makes it a little more fun. And heck, you can even be the shark. If you want to be the shark, <laughs> you can be the shark. <laughs> okay? So I kind of talked a little bit about some of the benefits, but now we're going to get into the, the full... It, it's going to protect you from stingers. That's why a lot of people wear them. If you've ever brushed against fire coral... I mean, it burns. It can leave a scar. It's pretty bad, and it's, you know, you don't even know you did it until it starts to light you up. And then the sun, this is going to save you money right away. You don't have to buy so much sunscreen. Why the heck lather yourself all down with that when you can wear one of these? The SPF rating ranges from 50 all the way up to 95. They block the sun. So if you're a snorkeler on the surface and you're under the sun, this is going to protect you from all that sunburn going on, okay? Um, they don't add to warmth. I want to say that because this is not one of those layers that you're going to want if you're cold-blooded and you're looking for something to fit under your wetsuit as another layer. It might help a tiny bit simply because it's going to trap more water between you and your suit, and that's what keeps you warm when your body warms up all that water under there. Okay, so it might help a tiny bit, but I wouldn't buy it for that reason. Um, they're also very cool on the land because they're so light and airy, and they dry so darn fast that it's like wearing your shirt from the water to the land and it dries out, okay? Um, now, I said that they don't really keep you warm, but can you imagine wearing a dark-colored one, like a black one, under the sun? It absorbs the heat rays. So if you're cold-blooded, you might think about a dark color because then it's going to add to a little bit of the warmth for you on, on land or on the boat ride home, that kind of thing. Um, I know that a lot of ladies love these because of modesty, right? You, it's something you can wear underwater, under your suit. And when you come up on the boat, you don't have to run to the bathroom or something like that to peel off your wetsuit just in case you have a wardrobe malfunction. Uh, you just peel it off and you're wearing this underneath. And super, super comfortable, okay? Um, now, I'll tell you, if you've seen our video on dive socks, if you haven't, go watch it. It's awesome. That's the next one you need to go to because our dive socks are made out of this material. It's, it reduces friction. So when you pull your wetsuit on when you're wearing dive socks, it glides on just like butter, okay? These do the same thing. We put thumb loops in our, in our Leviathan on our 5280 rash guards so you can put your arms through it and your thumbs and you slide your arms right through the wetsuit. Very simple. And just glides on like no friction at all. Okay? If the water is warm enough, um, I know a lot of people that they would just prefer not to wear a wetsuit. I would say wear something. And this is typically what those people like to wear. So, it prevents chafing. So if you're going to wear a BCD, rather than just your raw skin, you wear a rash guard, the BCD won't chew up your shoulders. It won't, you know, uh, rub it on your sunburn. <laughs> or even if just your skin, it won't chafe. If you're wearing a wet weight belt 
uh, and you need to wear it, then the rash guard, you wear it over the rash guard, it's really going to help uh, reduce any kind of abrasion or chafing, things like that. Anything with straps. So if you were on the beach with a backpack or your gear bag carrying all your gear to the boat in the sun, you're wearing your rash guard, it's just going to resist any kind of abrasion and chafing. Um, important to know, depending, remember I said it's not neoprene. Neoprene would add buoyancy. These don't add any buoyancy. So it's nice when you throw this on and you throw your wetsuit on, your buoyancy stays the same as it was before. So if you've already got your weights perfect for you, then this isn't going to change any of that. Okay? Now, they can be a little... <coughs> excuse me. They can be a little bit of a windbreak uh, when they're dry. So you're coming back on the boat and it's a little breezy. It's going to keep the wind off your skin. If you get some splashes from the boat, it's going to absorb, but then dry pretty quickly. Okay? Now, how do you fit one of these things? Okay? The, the, it's an inner layer, typically, at least for scuba divers, right? You could wear it as an outer garment if it was your sole source of protection on a really, really warm uh, water. Or snorkelers, it's going to be their outer garment. garment. Kayakers those kind of people. Typically, this will be on the outside. And if you're wearing a life vest or some sort of a protection device for flotation, kayaking, then this would also protect you from any kind of abrasion there. Now, people ask us all the time, do we wear this light, tight, or loose? Well, um, it's a little bit up to you. I mean, if you're like Mr. Seahorse over there and you've got, you're like a bodybuilder, you might want to show it off. You can wear it tight. Uh, typically, surfers like them tighter because when they take a tumble in the surf afterwards, they don't want it raising up on their body and allowing them to rub the sand and the rocks and coral and things like that. Uh, so they like them a little tighter. The kayakers sit vertical, so typically they like them kind of medium weight, a little snug but not, not tight. Uh, scuba divers, it's a second layer under your wetsuit, so really you can wear it as loose as you want. You see this one here I'm wearing, it's just loose. I'm wearing it like you would a shirt, and that's typical for scuba divers. But you can do it any way you want to. Um, you want to cover your skin, like a snorkeler for example, they're in the waves on the top. What would happen if it was so loose that the wind and over the, the water motion kept making it ride up? Well, it's not really protecting them from sun when they do that. So maybe a little bit of snugness at that point, okay? Um, when you put this on with a wetsuit, you, when you slide your arms through and it helps you to glide in, then it is held in its level. And I mentioned that if some of these would add a little bit more water inside the suit. So that's going to be, that's going to be helpful as well. Loose is still good for that. Okay, <clears throat> so you're not going to wear them for warmth necessarily. You're going to wear them for comfort. It's going to resist abrasion. It's going to resist the sun. And you can, it can add style and fun to your diving. Uh, you can get them in 100% recycled material if you like. Many of ours are recycled material, and some are even recycled from old fishing nets pulled out of the ocean and that sort of thing. You will find down in the description below you'll find a link to the uh, rash guards on our website and any specials that we might have going on. All right? I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day. You know, we need your help. There are way too many products out there to do an in-depth product review on. That's why we do these discovery videos, so we can bring you all the new stuff out there. But if you'll let us know in the comments below which products you'd like to see an in-depth review, we'll get to that just as quickly as we can. And you know how else you can help us? If you hit that like button, it lets us know that you like the content that we're putting in these videos. And if you hit subscribe, then you'll know when the next one comes out. We hope we've helped. Have a great day.